Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to take to start this workshop by asking you a few questions so that we'll be on the same page. Please answer these four questions verbally so that I know, or actually you, you can put them in chat. That'll, no, let's do it verbally. Please answer these four questions verbally so that we know what your opinion is. Get a little discussion going. So let's start with a, an easy question. What do you think is the Coast Guard Auxiliary's number one mission? Any, any opinions about that? Supplement the Coast Guard. Make some Ab Absolutely. What else? Um, to increase our membership. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. What else? Voting safety, public, public education. Okay, thank you. Any other ideas? Well, you know, uh, I would add on the uh, increasing our membership to, to reach out to uh, a more diverse and uh, younger membership. You know, um, the the answers that you you folks have given me are much better than the answers that I got the last time I put on a similar presentation. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the answers that probably we hear most often are uh, recreational boating safety and uh, mission support for the Coast Guard. And these absolutely are very important for what we do. So uh, you did really great. Here's the next question. What do you think attracts people to auxiliary member membership? Um, what are the things that make people want to become auxiliaries? Desire to serve. Being, being a, a inclusive. A desire to, uh, to serve, being inclusive. What else? A perception that it's a well-oiled machine. <laughs> okay. Organization. <laughs> okay. What I else? Say, uh, I would say... Uh, fun or fellowship. Oh, excellent. Anything else? Well, let me give you the, the answers that I had written down. Uh, and some of them are deliberately wrong. Um, would you say that people really, uh, they join the auxiliary because they love attending business meetings? <laughs> My guess is that if 1% of the membership loves attending business meetings, that's higher than I thought. Um, do you think people uh, join the auxiliary because they want to teach boating safety? A few, A few do, yeah. but most people don't. Um, do they join the auxiliary because they want to staff public affairs booths? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, a few people do, uh, but most don't actually. Um, I think some of the answers that are probably a little bit more on the mark um, patrols and uniforms. Uh, I think uh, an awful lot of people join because they want to get out on the water and uh, do the patrols. And I think a lot of people like wearing the uniforms. Uh, this answer uh, came up uh, as part of your feedback, uh, social picnics, dinner meetings, uh, and, and frankly, to be a part of Team Coast Guard. And these last three uh, answers definitely are not wrong. They are definitely things that attract people to auxiliary membership. Bruce? Yes, sir. Hey, great. I'm John Coles from Chattanooga. Have you guys looked at an age stratification in the uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary. Because one of the things you're mentioning, depending upon, I'm a boomer, and most people I see in this, this thing are boomers plus. Uh, I teach at a community college, and my Generation Zs would not be attracted to any of this stuff in terms of the things you mentioned. And it looks you, like I've only been in a short time, and it looks like a very gray organization. You are, you, you are about two slides ahead of me. Oh, okay. Sorry, sir. <laughs> uh, no, your your insight is exactly right, um, and and I'll be making a point about that in a minute. Um, so uh, you you folks have 
uh, given me some really good insights into this. Now, our next question is, why do people actually decide to join the auxiliary? And um, the answers that you're going to get are, are things that I've heard a lot. And as you probably know, uh, Holly is also an HR uh, staff officer. And I've heard an awful lot of the discussions that she's had with new members. So um, uh, why do people decide to join the auxiliary? What, what made them um, make that commitment? Nowadays, it's a hard thing to answer. <clears throat> OK. Well, let me just start For offering the, some of the things that, that I, I see up on the screen of our age. Uh, a lot of a lot of it was to, to uh, uh, serve the public. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of us were boaters. In fact, a lot of us, when we joined the auxiliary, you had to have a boat to join the auxiliary. Right. Well, let me Is give you a few. I'm sorry. Yeah, go this, ahead. Yeah, this is going to sound a little bit like motherhood, but oddly enough, I joined the auxiliary because I was a Sea Scout skipper, and I had not been involved previously. But with the contact, I decided when I moved to North Carolina, I would join. After I joined, uh, I started getting involved in boat crew and a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So it, it was once inside that I expanded my activity. But I joined, oddly enough, because of the Sea Scouts. Right. Well, uh, that's really not that odd. There are quite a few Sea Scouts and Sea Scout leaders who have joined the auxiliary. I'm just uh, putting up some of the answers that I've heard people uh, say that you know motivated them to to join uh, the auxiliary to help other boaters to give back. They like boating, love the water. This next one really is scary to me anyway. They want to learn how to boat. I'm not exactly sure that the Coast Guard auxiliary is necessarily the best place for that. A uh, family member was a Coastie, served the Coast Guard, learn about boating safety and to wear the uniform. And, and I'm afraid there are a lot of auxiliaries who really joined the auxiliary because they mostly wanted to uh, wear the uniform. And that's not a wrong reason, but hopefully there's more to it than that. So this gets to uh, the gentleman's question a couple moments ago. How, how would you describe the average new auxiliarist. What what does the a new auxiliarist sure. typically look like? Well, eager to get started. Okay. What else? Some of them look a bit dazed. Okay. All right. What else? I would say retired. Uh, um, and uh, male. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. These these are um, these are observations, um, and they're certainly borne out in statistics as well. Uh, the average age of the auxiliarist is in their upper sixties. Uh, they tend to be reasonably well off. Um, mostly white, mostly male, um, and and um, you know this uh, this description describes me as well. So I'm really not finding fault. Uh, I'm just making an observation of who we've been attracting to the Coast Guard Auxiliary. And I'm sure you've noticed that the uh, photographs that I've been using are of typical auxiliaries. Uh, this gentleman here recently passed away, a uh, very dedicated Coast Guard auxiliarist here in Maryland, and uh, he was well into his 80s, but had been in the auxiliary for many, many years, um, and, and is really rather typical of a Coast Guard auxiliarist. So here's my next question, and... <clears throat> um, I was gonna ask you to raise your hand, but I see that the version of the software we have here, I don't think gives you the chance to raise your hand. So what I'd like to do, like you to do is to go into the chat box and uh, I'm gonna open the chat box so that I can see what it says. Um, 
tell me um, how many is your division or your flotilla does it have more members than it did five years ago um, just say yes and we'll see yes or no okay that'll that'd be fine um so far every single one of you have said no and um that is oh here's one that's a little larger congratulations that's great news um but by and large uh, flotillas and uh, divisions are smaller today when i joined the coast guard auxiliary membership was about thirty-nine thousand. today 20 some years later the membership is at about 21,000. So we're almost down 50% from when I joined uh, 22 years ago. Um, and I think that's pretty revealing. Um, I'd like to uh, take a moment to think about why that is. And I guess the, the first question is, uh, how does your flotilla try to recruit new members? And I'm just going to give you uh, some some answers because I know these are how most flotillas do it. Um, many flo flotillas rely on people finding out a, about us on the web. This method does have some limited, limited success, but only limited success. They rely on people talking about us uh, talking with us at PA booths. This me method is good, but again, it has limited success. They rely on people hearing about us in the news, in magazines, or social media. This method, again, has limited success. And they rely on people finding out about us when they take a boating safety course or get a vessel safety check. Again, this has limited success. I mean, it does work, but it has limited success. Unfortunately, these techniques, which are our uh, traditional techniques for recruiting, don't attract enough people to sustain auxiliary membership numbers. More people are retiring from the auxiliary, aging out, or otherwise losing interest than the number of new members we attract. The problem is that we're talking to the same people who belong to a steadily shrinking pool of potential members. We need more younger members. We need more members who are minorities, male and female, and potentially more economically diverse than our current membership. The key is to talk to people who are outside of our current membership demographic and whose stage of life is different from our current membership. That means working with youth and their parents, all of whom are younger than most auxiliaries. It means offering something to potential members that they need on their terms, not on our terms. It means uh, making these younger potential members feel welcome, needed, and valued. The reality is that we're, that we're facing is that if we only recruit people who look like us, the auxiliary is going to die. And I don't mean to be alarmist, but if you recruit only people who are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, you're going to have people who are only going to be able to be active for a few years. On the other hand, if you're recruiting people who are in their teens, 20s, 30s, and 40s, they can be members for many decades. So why are we here? The Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Sea Scouts have been working together for many years, going back at least to the 1989 National Jamboree. The first formal agreement to cooperate was signed in 2009. In subsequent years, the Auxiliary and the Sea Scouts conducted many joint projects at local district and national levels. All of them went really well. Based in part on this success, as well as the Auxiliaries and the Coast Guard's awareness, they need to encourage young people 
to consider Coast Guard careers, a second more comprehensive agreement was developed and signed in 2018 in which the auxiliary designated the Sea Scouts as its official youth program. Let's have a look at who the Sea Scouts are and how they relate to the auxiliary. Sea Scouting is a Boy Scouts of America program that is open to older youth who are aged 13 and have completed the eighth grade through the age of 20. As the name implies, Sea Scouting is focused on nautical activities. It was founded in 1912 and is BSA's longest tenured older youth program. BSA's goal is to train youth in responsible citizenship, character development, and self-reliance through participation in a wide range of outdoor activities, educational programs, and career-oriented programs in partnership with community organizations. Sea Scouting has been open to both young men and young women since 1972. Its goals are to promote these objectives through instruction and practice in recreational boating safety, boating skills, and social and other events. And really, this should sound very familiar to most Coast Guard auxiliaries. It also promotes STEM education, leadership, community service, and life skills. These objectives, RBS, boating skills, and social events, parallel the auxiliary's four cornerstones and should look very familiar to us. At its core, Sea Scouting is a combination of scouting with the same old scout values and ways of working with youth combined with seamanship, including technical skills about STEM. So why are we supporting Sea Scouts? Well, to be candid, Membership in both the Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Sea Scout program have been stagnating for some time. The Auxiliary has done a poor job attracting new members, particularly falling short in reaching people under the age of 40. The Sea Scouts, on the other hand, have had trouble identifying adult volunteers with suitable seamanship skills and a willingness to give of their time. The long and the short of it is that the auxiliary needs the Sea Scouts and the Sea Scouts need the auxiliary. Working together brings the best of both worlds together to, re to revitalize and expand the Sea Scout program and the Coast Guard auxiliary for the benefit of the youth, the Coast Guard and the auxiliary. The Boy Scouts of America's Sea Scout program is now the official youth program of the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary, the Coast Guard's uniform volunteer components. Forging new leaders in service to others, safe and responsible boating. These are the noble objectives of this great alliance between two of the most widely recognized responsible seamanship organizations in the world. We've come together to share details about this alliance because we consider the outcomes vital for our country, for safe and responsible boating, and for the future of the Sea Scouts and the Auxiliary. We ask our leadership and all our members to collaborate and make this program successful. Here are just a few of the many benefits the Alliance offers us. Sea Scouts, you will benefit from augmented Coast Guard Auxiliary seamanship, STEM, leadership, and vocational training. You and your leaders can participate in Coast Guard Auxiliary shoreside and underway training and activities, introducing you to the exciting world of the United States Coast Guard. You'll also have full access to the Coast Guard Auxiliary seamanship, vocational, and leadership development programs. And Sea Scouts at least 14 years old are welcome to apply for auxiliary membership. Auxiliary flotillas can charter Sea Scout ships or units, creating a natural pathway from Sea Scouts to auxiliary membership or enlistment in the Coast Guard. Even Sea Scout ships chartered to other groups can be supported by local auxiliary flotillas. Auxiliaries and Sea Scouts, you will serve side by side, blending experience, youth, leadership, STEM training, and potential. Sea Scouts may even find their career path in the Coast Guard or maritime industry. 
Together, our organizations will learn, grow, and improve boating safety throughout the nation as we ourselves grow and enhance our seamanship and leadership skills. You'll hear much more in the coming months. We hope you're as excited as we are about this dynamic program that creates stronger leaders and superior seamanship today and tomorrow. Please watch for details as they emerge from your flotilla and ship leaders and help us forge this exciting alliance that ensures excellence, fun, and safety on U.S. waterways now and into the future. The 2018 MOA mandates a number of changes to how we work with Sea Scouts. These changes are codified in the Ox Scout Standard Operating Procedure, or SOP, and are not incorporated yet in the Auxiliary Manual. The most important changes are as follows. Auxiliary flotillas and divisions can charter Sea Scout ships, but not troops or packs. Sea Scouts as young as 14 can now join the auxiliary. For, for, for all others, the minimum auxiliary joining age is 17. <clears throat> a Sea Scout who joins the auxiliary must remain a Sea Scout member until at least their 17th birthday if they wish to continue their auxiliary membership. Sea Scouts and adult leaders who join the auxiliary have full access to training and qualifications available only internally to the Auxiliary and Coast Guard. Local flotillas are encouraged to provide public education, training, vessel examinations, and public affairs assistance to local ships. So why bother with Sea Scouts? Um, the Sea Scouts potentially provide new resources and personnel for the Auxiliary. They involve motivated and engaged adults and young adults, uh, perhaps with skills that we don't have. For example, the young adults may have social media and website design skills that we lack. And they're able to out, uh, help us with our outreach in boating safety mission to communities that we probably are underserving. This is a new program and first impressions are critical. As we work with Sea Scouts, if we build a positive impression, we're building a life, lifetime of expectations and uh, opinions about the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard Auxiliary. We're providing adult mentorship for youth in our community. We provide positive impressions about the Coast Guard and community service. And we provide a recruiting pipeline for the Coast Guard at all levels. So what are the opportunities for working with the Sea Scouts? Some of the easiest to uh, hook into because most flotillas know how to do this is providing public education opportunities, vessel safety checks, public affairs, program visits to scout camps and shops, and assistance with scout camperees, merit badge midways, or other training events. We also provide career education and guidance to Sea Scouts, introducing them to maritime careers, Coast Guard careers, and auxiliary membership personal careers. Rank advancement assistance. One of the things that we're doing is supporting the Sea Scout Advancement Program, and of course, providing on water activity and training. And what you're looking at here is a safety at sea event at Curtis Bay Coast Guard Yard that involves both Coast Guard Auxiliaries and Sea Scouts. The Ox Scout SOP authorizes every flotilla and division to charter one Sea Scout ship each. Imagine the Coast Guard Auxiliary could potentially organize 800 new Sea Scout units that would feed membership into local auxiliary units. What would the auxiliary look like? Well, of course, it would be much bigger. 
much younger and much more able to provide the help that the Coast Guard really needs. I know that some of our older members are worried that working with Sea Scouts would mean babysitting immature Cub Scout aged children, but that's just not who Sea Scouts are. Sea Scouts are older teenagers who are mostly the best and brightest kids in the neighborhood. They take responsibility for their actions and they're not scared of hard work or wearing uniforms. Doesn't that sound like a good addition to your flotilla? I think so. And don't forget that these Sea Scouts have parents who are mostly younger than the average Coast Guard Auxiliaris. Once we have them involved, we will have their help for many, many years. Another way to work with Sea Scouts is to partner with a local Sea Scout unit, which is called a ship. There are hundreds of ships all over the country, and most would welcome the opportunity to work with you. This can be as informal as occasional visits to teach special subjects, such as navigation or radio communications, or a more formal commitment to provide auxiliaries as adult leaders and trainers and setting up underway training opportunities for Sea Scout and auxiliary vessels. Building a partnership with a local Sea Scout ship can involve holding joint vessel exam events, public affairs booths, or informal picnics. The bigger your investment, the bigger the rewards will be. One type of joint Sea Scout auxiliary activity that's been successfully held across the country for many years is called Safety at Sea. This event is usually hosted by Coast Guard Auxiliary and active duty staff. It gives the Sea Scouts an opportunity to learn safety techniques and train on equipment that isn't available to them. Skills include damage control trainers, firefighting, P6 pumps, man overboard drills, exposure suits, live flare training, radio communications, and marine environmental protection. Safety at sea events usually also involve Coast Guard and auxiliary recruiter presentations, Everyone has a great time, and the Sea Scouts leave energized and enthused. Speaking from personal experience, so do the Coasties and the Auxiliaris. Let's spend a few minutes talking about the Auxiliary Sea Scout Youth Development Program, which we call Aux Scout. To make this work right, it's very important that we understand our commitment to the Scouts. The Memorandum of Agreement, or MOA, commits the auxiliary to provide certain types of support to the Sea Scouts. We've adopted the Sea Scouts as our official youth program, and that means making training, leadership, and public affairs support available to the Sea Scouts. The Standard Operating Procedures, or SOP, outlines how we should be working with Sea Scouts. This document was developed by BSX with the involvement of auxiliaries who are actively involved with the Sea Scouts. Legal and liability issues have been carefully reviewed and addressed. Everything has been thoroughly tested and it works really well. These documents spell out our commitment uh, and how the Coast Guard expects us to implement it. An important requirement that all auxiliaries working directly with the Sea Scouts must take part in is BSA's Youth Protection Training, or YPT. Mm. This training explains our responsibilities to protect the young adults that we're working with it also provides strategies that when followed will ensure that we have a productive and safe experience working with the scouts. YPT is available online and takes about an hour and a half to complete. You don't have to be registered with BSA to take this training and your personal information will not be used to record, I'm sorry, will only be used to record your training completion. Once the YPT training has been taken, 
the flotilla commander should send a copy of the course completion certificate to DIROX so that it can be entered into your AUX data record. As is the case for all adults working with BSA youth, this training must be completed every 24 months. If I had to boil down YPT to a simple rule, it would be that we must never allow ourselves to interact with BSA youth on anything but a one, I mean, to, we should never interact with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We should always have more than one person there. Every division, every, on that, excuse me? They should also, yeah, something to note on that is that includes working uh, with electronic email any kind of communications, always it's, make sure there's somebody else on there. It's anti in any interaction with BSA youth. You must have another person there. So if you are going to interact with a Sea Scout via email or via telephone, have another adult, whether it's another auxiliarist or another Sea Scout leader or a parent of the youth, just have somebody else monitoring it so that uh, it's not a one-on-one -on -one communication. Every division should have an AUG Scout staff officer who can focus their auxiliary involvement on supporting this effort. These individuals are responsible for knowing the auxiliary's AUG Scout policies and best practices and working with flotillas and divisions to implement them. The district and division AUG Scout staff officers promote AUG Scout, establish working relationships with Sea Scout leaders and local Scout councils, and ensure that auxiliaries are made aware of Sea Scout and auxiliary training opportunities. Ox Scout workshops have been developed that can deliver that can be delivered <clears throat> live at district and sector training conferences. They're also available as recorded videos that can be watched on the Ox Scout YouTube channel. The National Youth Programs Division can also provide trainers who can mentor local members. Additionally, the youth program staff are available for coaching on special topics. Contact us and we'll match you up with the best person for your need. Another great resource is the Ox Scout map at tinyurl.com dot uh, slash Ox Scout map. And again, this address is in the link that Holly has provided. This map shows where the Sea Scout ships and Coast Guard Auxiliary flotillas are. This also provides address and web links for most. The Sea Scout ships on this map are the teardrop shaped marks and the flotillas are the dots. The map is useful because it helps to identify where nearby flotillas and ships are so that they can partner together. Where there's a flotilla and no ship, the flotilla can consider starting one. Where there's a Sea Scout ship and no flotilla, maybe that's an opportunity to consider starting a flotilla. I'd like to focus on why this is important to the auxiliary. I'm sure you've noticed that the auxiliary needs to bring in more younger people. We have a bad habit of talking to ourselves and unless we actively work with young people, they won't consider joining the Coast Guard or the auxiliary. Positive interactions build a sense of team loyalty, which results in young adults wanting to join the Coast Guard and the auxiliary. This photo is of a Sea Scout Safety at Sea participant at Curtis Bay Coast Guard Yard. This Sea Scout is learning how to use a flare so that she'll be, she'll be safe on the water. The event, the event is run by Sector Maryland National Capital Region Coast Guard Auxiliaries, and this is a payoff for us and for the Coast Guard. The photo on the right shows some of last summer's Eagle Cruise Sea Scouts. Quartermaster Sarah from ship 198 in Delaware on the left 
is one of uh, at least two Sea Scout AIM Week participants who are now members of the Coast Guard Academy's first year class. This is a payoff for us. This Sea Scout recently joined the Coast Guard Auxiliary because of her involvement with the Sea Scouts. This is a payoff for us. The Sea Scouting Coast Guard Auxiliary Partnership is the future of both organizations. It brings a breath of fresh air to the auxiliary. It's been marketed to over 1 million BSA families and has been received very well. We need to follow up on that and continue to integrate and build so that we have growth from it. I hope that you agree that we need more of these bright, dedicated young leaders in the Coast Guard and the Auxiliary. We can make it happen and we need your help. Hi, my name is Hannah Carter and I'm the Western Region Bosun from Mariner'ship 936. People often ask me how Sea Scouts has changed my life and I cannot begin to explain to you how much it has changed my life. It has led me to so many opportunities including friendships, different sorts of programs, and it has influenced me to choose a career path through the Coast Guard Academy or the Naval Academy. Please understand that we will not succeed without your active involvement. Every division needs an active support, needs to actively uh, support and encourage. Let me try that again. Every division needs the active support and encouragement of the elected leadership, frequently reminding members of the vital importance of supporting the Sea Scouts. We need effective leaders appointed as Ox Scout staff officers in every division. Their primary mission is to promote our involvement and support uh, the Sea Scouts at the local level. We must commit to providing Sea Scout support in every division. This can be provided uh, by uh, giving vessel safety checks, public education, public affairs or training support. This can be by partnering with a local ship. This can be by chartering a new Sea Scout ship. The message I hope you hear is that this isn't someone else's job. It's your job and it's everybody's job. So all of the resources mentioned in this presentation are available online at this web address and I believe that Holly has uh, put this uh, URL in the chat box. So I'd encourage you to copy it down or you could even click on the link and it will take you to the page. Don't be put off by uh, a different title for this page. I did this originally to brief all of the district commodores at N-Train earlier this year, but all of the links still are very good and I would encourage you to check them out. So we're gonna to go to questions in a moment, but I wanna turn off the recording so that we can uh, talk about whatever we wanna talk about. So let's see.